All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the Doppler effect. And the Doppler effect is defined this way, but we're going to have to go a lot farther for you to understand it. It's the apparent change in pitch or frequency due to position. That's the easy way to define it, but I know you don't exactly understand what it is uh, right now. Um, just to illustrate what the Doppler effect is, in case you don't recognize the word, I'm going to play a video, a couple videos for you. The first one is of a car that is sounding its horn, and hopefully you can hear this. The car is sounding its horn, and uh, the video is taken from inside the car. So let's watch and listen to what happens. You might notice that the frequency never changed in that in that video. The frequency stayed the same the entire time. Uh, and now the second video I'm going to show you is the same car doing the same horn, but it's taken from the vantage point of outside the car from the sidewalk. Uh, this is a stationary observer as the car passes by. So hopefully you notice that in that video, the frequency dramatically decreases as the car passes by. You've probably heard this before. And every three, four-year-old kid knows how to do this sound with a car. It's the, what you hear as the race cars pass by on the racetrack. The car goes... That's not what the car engine actually does. That's an effect. That's an apparent effect due to this Doppler effect, which we'll explain in a minute. And the third one, the video that I'm going to show you is played is taken from a car that is passing this car moving the opposite direction. Listen to this. Okay, you get the same effect, but this time the effect is just more dramatic simply because the car passes, um, the relative speed is greater. It's a, it's a more dramatic effect. So in your notes, you have this Doppler effect thing. And your notes look like this. You have some boxes here. So I want you to sketch what I'm going to show you in these boxes. We're going to start with standing still or a stationary sound source. So here's our, um, here's what I want you to look at here, stationary sound source. Uh, just draw this that you see here. What you see is, um, let's say this is a car honking its horn. This is something that is producing sound, the sound is radiating out in all directions, and what you notice is it looks kind of like a bullseye. Um, all the sound waves are radiating out at the same speed uh, away from each other. The lines represent sound waves, they represent the compressions of a sound wave, and you'll notice that all the waves stay the same distance apart. That's not hard to understand. We understand that. So draw that picture in your notes and it just looks like a bullseye, right? Same distance as you go through all the waves. Now, if you go to the right on your notes, it says moving at Mach 0.7. Mach is what we use to refer to something's speed in relation to the speed of sound. Mach 1 is moving at the speed of sound. So this is something that is moving at 70% of the speed of sound. And you don't even have to move that fast to understand or to hear the Doppler effect. The car in the video was probably moving at 20 or 30 miles an hour. Um, and you can hear the Doppler effect then. You have to be moving fairly quickly to hear this, like you can't hear it if I'm walking past you. But moving quickly, you can hear it. Anyway, here's what it is at Mach 0.7. Just look at the animation first before you draw, and you'll notice that on the right side of the source, first of all, the source is moving to the right, and on the right side, the waves are compressed. And on the back side, the waves get stretched out. I want you to imagine and compare it to, in the top one, let's just say I throw a baseball. And if I throw a baseball, the baseball moves away from me at a constant speed just like these waves do. Well, now the same thing happens. I throw a baseball and the waves, the baseball moves away from me. But now, instead of throwing it and standing still, I'm throwing it and I'm running after it. I'm chasing the baseball. This object is moving and creating sound at the same time. When that happens, what the, the result is that the waves, the sound waves in front of the object get compressed. And remember that sound waves are made up of compressions, which are areas where the medium is very dense, where there's a lot of high pressure. So what is happening is you're compressing the compressions in front of you, and you're stretching them out behind you if you are moving. That's what happens. This is the result of the Doppler effect. And the reason why it sounds this way uh, is not because that's the frequency that's actually being produced by the car. It's an apparent effect. It's a phenomenon. 
So we have to understand frequency. You remember that frequency is the number of waves that pass by you per second or the number of cycles per second. So let's consider that you're standing in two places in front of this moving object and behind the moving object and I want you to watch those places and the question I have is in which place does your ear catch more waves per second? In other words, is which place in which place is the frequency higher? Well, it should be obvious that where the waves are closer together, your ear is going to catch more sound waves per second. Therefore, your brain, your ear is going to perceive a higher frequency at the front, even though that frequency is not actually being produced by the object. And vice versa, in the back, since the waves are getting stretched out, your ear catches fewer waves per second. The frequency is artificially decreased, therefore your ear hears a lower pitch at the backside, even though that frequency is not actually being produced by the object. Let me keep, let me remind you, this object is producing the same frequency. These sound waves are emitting from the object at the same frequency, but since it's moving, it's compressing it, the waves in front of it, which artificially increases the frequency for the listeners out here, and it's stretching out the waves behind it, which artificially decreases the frequency for the listeners back here. And so now if you put it all together and this thing actually passes you, the sound that you hear goes from high frequency, high frequency, high frequency, and as soon as it passes you get low frequency, low frequency, low frequency. And so that's the reason why you hear the sound when something passes by is not because that frequency is being produced, it's because it's an artificial effect. It is the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is the artificial increasing or decreasing of, of a, a frequency due to the movement of something that is producing sound. And so the natural next question would be, or should be, well, what happens at Mach 1? What happens when you move at the speed of sound? So now we have something that looks like this. So draw this in your notes. You'll notice that all of these sound waves come together all in the same place on the right side. This is now an object that is producing sound and at the same time moving at the same speed as that sound. In relationship to the baseball, I throw the baseball and I run after it and I can actually run at the same speed as the ball. I can watch the ball travel through the air right beside me because we're going at the same speed. It sounds preposterous, but that's what happens here. Most of the time this happens with airplanes. They can break the sound barrier and it looks like this. And when airplanes break the sound barrier, this is what's going on. So they are producing sound and they're moving at the same speed as that sound. Remember I said that uh, when airplanes break the sound barrier, uh, or when, when, when objects move and are producing sound, that sound is a compression wave, and the sound waves are being compressed in front of the object. Well, now you're really, really compressing the sound waves to the point where in front of this moving object, there's this high pressure wall of air, this high density, high pressure wall of air that's moving in front of the object. That high pressure sound barrier is very important um, because as the plane moves from the speed of sound to now breaking the speed of sound, what happens is literally the cone, the nose cone of the, of the plane breaks through that wall of sound, then that high pressure is all released. The sound waves look like this. Now the plane is actually outrunning its own sound. It's going faster than the sound it's created, which is called supersonic. Uh, faster than the speed of sound. If you've ever heard a sonic boom, that is what this is. And a sonic boom looks and sounds kind of like this. I know that may not be very good quality. You can look it up in your own time on YouTube, but uh, the point is that uh, you might have seen, let's roll this back a little bit, you might have seen around the plane um, there were some high pressure sound waves that caused clouds to form. So you have this cloud formation right here. In fact, in this page, you get the cloud formation in this picture. So I want to talk to you about the cloud formation and what happens and why that happens. 
So I showed you guys this example in class. If you were here, if you were not, I know you've all done this before, where you can twist up a water bottle like this. And it only works with a really thin one. If it's too thick, it won't work. But now you know that there's high pressure inside the bottle. And the thing about high pressure is that uh, when the pressure increases, so does the temperature, right? And vice versa, the temperature decreases when the pressure decreases. As I pop the top, that pressure will go down. And when the pressure goes down, the temperature goes down. And the cool thing about temperature is temperature controls the amount of water that air can hold. Um, the lower the temperature, the less water it can hold. What that means is as this temperature drops, it can't hold as much water and that water begins to come out of the air in the form of liquid water. And so we're gonna see this nice, fun, let's see, maybe I should do it right here in front. Where can you see it best? Right here in front of me. How about that? Watch for the cloud. Here, let's try this. Autofocus. I know the video looks really weird right now, but it's fixing to get better. All right, there we go. Ready? Here it comes. One, two, three. All right, so there was our cloud. You've done that before. Uh, the reason why you get that cloud is because we have this sudden decrease in pressure, which goes to a sudden decrease in temperature. And when the temperature decreases, it can't hold very much water. Um, and all that water then comes out of the air in the form of a cloud. Well, the same thing happens in front of, with a sonic boom in front of the plane. The plane has compressed all this, all this sound wave in front of it. It's got this wall of high pressure air and the cone of the plane literally breaks through that wall, releases the pressure, and the pressure gets released and you hear the sonic boom and you get the cloud and all that fun stuff. All right, so that's the Doppler effect. Um, the things that go down there on the bottom of the notes, remember that pitch is frequency. Pitch is due to frequency. That means high frequency waves will sound like a high pitch. Low frequency waves will sound like a low pitch. But I didn't tell you about the Doppler effect is that not only does it change the pitch, the intensity also increases as well, or changes rather. And this is on the back side of the notes. Intensity is the loudness or the amplitude of the sound. Um, and intensity simply changes because in intensity always changes if the sound source is closer to you. Like if, if you guys sit in the front row, I'll always sound louder to you just because uh, you're closer. Uh, so you need to know the point of the whole thing you gotta know about Doppler effect is that how does the pitch perceived by the listener change? Well, as the as the siren or the honking car, whatever it is, as it approaches, as it gets closer to you, the intensity and the apparent high pitch are going to increase, right? The pitch increases as it gets closer to you, and as it passes you and moves farther away, the intensity and the pitch will decrease, okay? So the sound, the, the, the pitch increases first, and then it decreases. Does the actual pitch change? We've talked about this already. The answer is no. The pitch itself does not change. It stays the same. And so we talked about the sonic boom. Sonic booms occur when the object creating the sound waves move faster than the sound waves it is itself creating. When that happens, compressions constructively interfere with each other. And we'll talk about in, a, in the next video what constructive interference is. Uh, you don't have to worry about it right this minute. Uh, and then that wall of sound that is being compressed in front of the plane, when it's broken, is heard, it's heard as, a, as a sonic boom. So that's, that's really what the Doppler effect is all about.